Welcome back to the Auto Explain channel. Today, we'll be sharing a guide on how to use Exentry, a specialized diagnostic software for Mercedes Benz vehicles. This is the icon of the software used for Mercedes-Benz models from 2008 onwards, such as W204, W205, W212, W243, W221, and W222. This diagnostic software is designed for newer high-end vehicles. Here is the main interface of the X-Entry software for Mercedes-Benz. Mercedes-Benz, under the parent company Daimler AG, also owns other brands such as Smart Maybach and even Bike Motor in China. Daimler AG holds ownership over these brand lines. Today, we will access the Mercedes-Benz section to diagnose a real vehicle. You can double-click on Mercedes-Benz to begin. The first screen to appear is the VIN input tab where you can enter the chassis number of the car. Step 1. Identify the vehicle you're diagnosing, whether it's a passenger car, a sports vehicle light truck, or even larger vehicles like the Vario. You'll also find several special functions here. For most users, the passenger car section is the most frequently used. Here you'll see different vehicle models like Mercedes ABCE and various SUVs categorized by their series such as A-Class, C-Class, etc. You simply choose the exact series you're diagnosing. Today we're working on a GLK so you can select it by clicking directly on the model or by searching GLK in the search bar. Within GLK there are several model designs. You can either select the correct one manually or just click Exentry Dynamic and the software will automatically recognize the vehicle. Next the diagnostic interface will display and the process goes through six steps. It begins with reading the VIN number, followed by checking the vehicle's configuration options and codes, along with setup and connectivity with various components. The software will run this process automatically. You can see the VIN is already detected, and this is a GLK204 model along with the transmission type. This section shows basic information about the engine type and transmission. You have two options here, quick test or current quick test if you've already performed a test and want to return to that session. On the left column under overview you'll find diagnostic, the main diagnostic section, and below that information tabs including previous customer complaints, connectivity requirements and more. From here you can also access control units directly. This section displays the CAN network or data network connections among the control modules in the vehicle. You can see which modules belong to which CAN system and by expanding the CAN diagram, you can visualize how modules are interconnected. Returning to the quick test screen, the software will automatically detect and display a list of all installed control units in the car. The software is synchronized with WIS and DAS and also shows abbreviations and module IDs for each control unit. A1 is the instrument cluster, A2 is the radio system, N210 is the airbag control unit, N310 is the engine control unit. You should try to remember these abbreviations or component names as they will help speed up the process during diagnostics later. Normally, we will use the start quick test function. Pay attention on this vehicle. There are 33 control units installed. In the top right corner, you'll notice 12.1V, which is the battery voltage and English, non-indicating the key status. Earlier, I clicked on the engine control unit, which is why it is now displayed here. This means the software has finished the initial scan. It has completed a basic check of all control units in the car. The software runs fairly quickly. Here you can see the names of all the control units. On the right column, you'll notice symbols like a big F, a small F, or a green check mark. A capital F indicates current faults. These are active errors in the control unit. A lowercase f or i means stored faults or historical faults and i can also represent an event or informational data logged by the unit. These indicators help us understand which control units are currently experiencing issues and which ones are functioning properly. The yellow icons represent major vehicle systems. For example, the body electrical system, driver assistance systems, and powertrain systems. Within the powertrain system, you'll find components like the engine gear selector module, fuel pump transmission, etc. The software organizes these into main systems, each of which contains subsystems and individual modules. 
You also have filters here, error filters that you can use to sort the modules. You can click this and sort modules with errors to appear first and those without errors to appear later. This is the filter button. Clicking the funnel icon will show only those control units with faults or events and hide those without any issues helping you focus only on units with current problems. There is also a clear fault memory button. Clicking this will erase all stored faults in all control units. This is a quick way to reset the system. I usually use this function when a new vehicle arrives. I first perform a complete system scan, save all the fault data, then clear all faults and scan again. Whatever faults remain are the active issues and I will focus on diagnosing and resolving those. Next, I'll show how to access a specific control unit to see what information can be retrieved from it. For example, if we want to access the engine control unit, you can either click on it and hit continue or double click the module and let the software confirm the request. On the current interface, it shows that we are diagnosing the engine control unit labeled as N3 Pass 10. The first section is version information, which includes details about this control unit, such as hardware and software versions, specifically the hardware code, software code, supplier information, and software version. Additionally, there's information about the manufacturing plant and other code identifiers. In summary, this section provides a full overview of the engine control unit, the second function is error codes and events. This section is used to read and clear faults from the control unit. When I click on error codes, the software will access and display all the existing errors within this engine ECU. As you can see, there are many fault codes currently displayed. Most of them are marked with a capital F, meaning these are active faults. These faults must be addressed and resolved. Once they become lowercase f stored faults, then they can be cleared. Only after that can we confirm whether the faults are truly gone. The third function is actual values. This displays real-time data or working parameters of various sensors and components. The software organizes these into smaller categories. Within the engine ECU, you can check parameters such as engine idling status, full load engine operation, misfire detection or whether any cylinders are not firing commonly known as engine vibration or rough running. This entire section allows you to select and retrieve sensor data or values from different components. What's very useful is that the software separates it into three columns. The name of the sensor component parameter, the current value and the standard or reference value. This is especially helpful during diagnostics when no fault codes are present. In such cases, analyzing live data becomes essential. This section is designed exactly for that purpose. Below, there are also additional support tools, such as the ability to record data over a specific period. Furthermore, the software can display data as graphs or charts to make it easier for you to observe trends and behavior. Finally, within this parameter function, the software also allows you to create your own custom parameter list for quicker access. Let me know if you'd like this rephrased as a training script tutorial or infographic style breakdown. Activation. This function is used to activate or send commands from the control unit to actuators causing them to operate. For example, activating the fuel pump. In this case, the system requires that the engine is running, meaning the engine speed must be over 500 RPM before the fuel pump can be activated. Currently, I have the engine idling. In some cases, you might want to activate the pump manually to check whether it runs. The activation function is useful in situations where you're unsure whether the pump is faulty if there's a wiring issue or if the control unit isn't sending a signal. By using this feature, the control unit sends out an activation signal, which you can then measure either directly at the ECU connector or at the pump connector. This helps rule out wiring faults or ECU failure. This is one of the highly useful functions during the diagnostic and troubleshooting process. Many components can be manually activated this way. Moving on to the next function, adaptation. This is a more advanced feature. The purpose of adaptation is to help components or systems adjust and recalibrate, especially when parts are replaced or after prolonged use. This function is often referred to as teaching or calibration, although in the software it appears under the term adaptation. Some of the advanced features within this section include preparing the system for installing a new control unit. When replacing an ECU, you can use this feature to make the system ready for the new module. 
Additionally, adaptation also includes software updates. However, many of these advanced functions require manufacturer-level access or login credentials, which makes them less accessible for general users. Within the adaptation menu, there is also a config function. This allows you to configure or recode the ECU engine control unit. One of the most commonly used features is Teach-in. This includes various learning and calibration routines for different components. Examples include relearning the throttle body GA, initializing the fuel pump actuation or adaptation, teach-in driver. This function is essential when replacing used, refurbished or second-hand ECUs. In such cases, you must first review the ECU. To allow it to work and start the engine after installation, the teach-in of drive process is required. There are also other less frequently used features in the latter part of the software. These involve entering dealership information or printing out detailed fault code reports that include dealer data. These are rarely used in daily diagnostics. There are some special procedures included as well, though also not commonly used. However, one important feature is the test function. This is used to check sensors or component groups. The software provides a guided test process which is extremely helpful for both diagnostic tool users and technicians. During diagnostics, you can connect the software to the vehicle and follow the provided instructions to troubleshoot or check potentially faulty or suspicious sensors. The software will guide you step by step through the process. For example, we can access the airbag control module, specifically the SRS section. During the process of entering the control module, the system will provide us with certain warnings. On the interface of each module we access, we typically see information such as the module's details, fault code reading and clearing real-time values, including resistance values for airbag igniters along with options for adaptation, calibration and configuration. For advanced functions, we usually go into the Adaptation section. This is especially common for functions like resetting or relearning the transmission control unit or adjusting systems such as air suspension, which often require access to these functions for proper operation. The test function also provides access to various sensors and components that can be checked or serviced. Some important notes. Below is the area where when we connect the diagnostic tool, it should light up in green. Above, we can see the battery voltage, e.g. 12.0V. During usage, always keep an eye on this voltage level. If the voltage drops too low, it may result in loss of connection or incorrect sensor readings due to weak power supply, which can lead to inaccurate diagnostics. See you in the next video for more in-depth guidance on X-Entry.